everybody, Ashley and Jerome here from Atmosphere Collectibles. Uh, this is another We're at Home uh, video. Uh, today was Record Store Day. Um, Thanks to everybody that came in. Yes. Uh, uh, we appreciate everybody for coming in today, uh, even though our shop uh, has still, we're still waiting for approval to uh, pledge for Record Store Day. Uh, we meet the criteria. Uh, I think um, we just, you know, we're still waiting. So, so hopefully November. Uh, yeah, but we appreciate all the support we got um, this uh, today and then the last drop. Uh, mm -hmm. With the three drops, it's kind of spread of thin because uh, everybody's putting money back for so many records that are coming out. So uh, we do appreciate everybody that took yeah. the time to come in and uh, spend with us. Yeah. But, um, so tonight, uh, we're just gonna show a few records, uh, some regional stuff, and maybe some of our personal collection if we have time. Then tomorrow we'll be doing a stock video, because uh, we still have a yeah. huge part of that metal collection going out. We bought an indie collection today. Lots of great stuff. Um, so we'll be going out, but, uh, so tonight... We're going to show some really cool regional and private press stuff that we think is cool and maybe some other, yeah. maybe, if we, maybe if we have time, some carcass records. So, <laughs> so um, well, we're in, uh, we're located in Evansville, Indiana, which is um, a south, southern part of the state. And uh, here in Evansville, there was a label called Gigantic Records. Um, it was uh, on uh, off Franklin and um, Garfield. The uh, f our first store was actually like a block away from it. Yeah. Um, I mean they they closed in the seventies. Uh, um, it was a funeral home slash recording studio slash record label slash apartment building. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, very maybe, interesting. Maybe if I have time tomorrow, I'll go by there and see some video of the actual building at all. Happened in. There's actually I've been. There's actually two locations, but uh, one is on Franklin and um, kind of over by Hottebach, and the other one is on Franklin and Garfield. So. So um, even though, like, for a lot of our local collectors, uh, one of the big grails, and it's not just for the local people. This is a, a rare psych folk grail for all over the world. All over the world. Um, um, there's but, a lot of rumors about this record. Right, there is a lot of rumors as far as the quantity uh, press. Now, um, first off, the album is called Hickory Wind. Um, that's what the cover looks like. The artwork on the back is also really awesome. Um, now, the um, the story is that there was only 100 press, uh, although members of the band, uh, are Mark, Mark, are Matt McGuire, had even said himself that he's thinking that it might be more like a thousand, but or possibly even more, just or possibly due to the more. number that have been found in Evans over the yeah. years, and the fact that, um, well, it's he said that it's not a common they, record. They said when they went and drove and picked up the uh, the records uh, that were pressed in New York, they loaded up a whole st station wagon, and uh, from buying collections and used to we used to we have a station wagon. A of, you can fit thousands of records line. in a station yeah, you wagon. you can fit literally so, two thousand records. So yeah, wagon. but so. as as uh, limited as they are, um, we this is actually our first copy that we found. Um, uh, you know, Drove's been doing this for twenty plus years, probably 25, 30 years almost, and. Um, and we've had a store here in Evansville, like our brick and mortar now has been open for over two years, but our first store was open from 2002 to 2009. You think of all that time um, that we got, uh, finally got a copy. Uh, and it's a really nice copy. Um, this one you know, is already sold. It is already sold, yes. So. Uh, funny, kind of interesting story is uh, we were you know we've been in a buying frenzy it's like a lot of people are selling uh we're getting a lot of records coming in which is wonderful uh and uh you know just somebody came in with a small stack worth of records and i was across the store and drone uh 
I saw the stack from afar, and the stack of me, I could just wasn't like super excited about it. I thought it was going to be junk. And then when I overheard Jerome, what he was paying for it, I was kind of like taken aback, and I was like, what's going on? what the heck is going on? Like, I was sort of, you know, and then so when they left, you know, they were real happy or whatever. And when they left, I looked over at him and I was kind of like, what in the world? And he goes, go over there and look at that stack. And so I, I, well, he had a few in the front and they were not like, they were okay. And I was sort of like, well, and then he's like, keep looking. And I, I get to this and I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, and so then and we've been buying so much too. So I did list this online and uh, on put it up on Discogs, and uh, it sold within like six hours. Uh, I immediately started getting emails about it, asking for pictures, and um, I thought, oh, I'll just shoot a video of it playing and I'll put it up on YouTube and I'll send it to you. And I didn't take the listing down while. It, you know, while, uh, they were waiting for me to do that, I was, it was a busy day. And then all of a sudden I see it sold and I was just like, well, uh, who knew? It sold really fast, but, um, it is a neat record and it's very sought after. Uh, it sells for like VG copies sell for about 800, uh, VG plus copies sell for about a thousand. Or um, more. Or more, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's hit the uh, fifteen mark. I've seen really bad copies sell for a thousand. I mean, yeah, and but, uh, I mean, yeah. I think uh, one just sold on eBay at auction, and it looked like half the cover down here was uh, gone, and it went for seven hundred and eleven on auction, and so and it was barely G. Uh, yeah, it looked pretty. I mean, it it was crazy, but. This one is fully intact. I didn't try to clean the cover. I, I just took pictures of it and I thought, we'll leave that to the buyer. Um, we really didn't expect that it would be so, like we would turn it so quickly, but um, you know, we found one and now we're gonna be looking for more. Now the label, Gigantic, it was ran by a guy, he's a guy that had the funeral home slash apartment building slash recording studio. It was ran by a guy named uh, Herb Hat. He's since passed away. He also ran the Singer's Soul Machine Company, our fix-it place here in town. But um, he put out several 45s, and he also put out this record here, which is also on Gigantic. And so this is Lee Hyatt, and it's called What If We Gave a War and Nobody Came. Which basically, what it's called What If We Gave a War. But this is also folk... Um, and one of the Hickory Wind songs, I believe, is a cover of a song that was originally on here. Yeah, so I think it was Judy. Um, yeah, Judy. So uh, track one on side one of Lee Hyatt is called Judy, and that's also on the Hickory Wind. And um, some of our customers and friends or whatever, they... Uh, like their dads were in Hickory Wind, and then after Hickory Wind, they went on to uh, become BF Trike. BF Trike, um, and we've had the reissue of that. That was uh, like it was put on vinyl later, you know, and uh, we've had that in. And that was pretty cool. I think the people in the band were more fond of that than even this, but uh, it's just BF you know, Trike is a little heavier. Uh, this record, the one that... It's, if you can hear it in the background, we have you're it playing, listening yeah. to it right now. But it is, so. um, it's going to South Korea, which, I mean, I had people, everyone who contacted me uh, wanting pictures of it uh, when I had it listed, which were like immediately uh, after listing, was from Italy, uh, I can't remember yeah, where the I other one was. Yeah, I kind of wanted to keep it local, but unfortunately... Uh, it's a lot of money to put into a record, and then you have yeah. to sell it kind of fast afterwards. Mm -hmm. But the next one, we'll, we'll, if we get another one, we'll try to keep it local. Absolutely. But, um, it's a super cool record, and uh, we were happy to get it. And, uh, yeah, we get really excited about the regional stuff anytime we find it. Um, he also put out a bunch of 45s, which are a little more common. You can usually pick those up for about 20 bucks in really good shape. Um, the... 
let's uh, have a war. Uh, it's what about forty to fifty dollar record? Yes. And it's uh, it's a little rare, but you do you do see him. We were having a conversation with uh, one of our friends, and he was talking about how he always would see that one at the Goodwill and stuff. And yeah, and now since more people are collecting, I think I've never he found hasn't. anything yeah. ever at the Goodwill. <laughs> like my entire life, I've always gone by Goodwill. So I, I hear about all these great stores. I've never found a single record. That's right. What we're talking about. But I mean, since we so, have the store, like we don't go to Good. We're, that's not where we find our records. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it, but even for the years when we didn't have a store, never once. I mean, I've never had any crazy Goodwill scores except for like buying clothes that are cool, maybe some paint by number paintings that I collect. But. We get people that knock on the door at all hours of the night to sell records. So, but not Goodwills. Yeah, not Goodwills. So those two we're really excited about. Um, and then also in another collection, I don't know if the, I can't remember, I think these came from the same collection, didn't they? Yes, they did, but this is not regional here. That is a, it's sort of regional. Sort of regional, yes. Yeah. Okay, well. This is a, another kind of pricey, really cool regional record. Uh, so this, I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying his name yet, or correctly, because, uh, and it, his name is, uh, Ken, Ken Rotten. Ken Rotten. R H O T E N, and the album is called Flying Saucer Man. And this is on, uh, this is from 1979. It, is pre it says professional de demonstration recording on the back and really small. And it's not the, the sole record label, uh, Neptune. It is uh, from Sherryville, Indiana, which is, I think, close to Chicago. Yeah, I believe the Neptune. This is the only record on Neptune that oh, okay. Neptune. Yeah. Well, this is like so, folk site kind of. It's from 1979, and it's um, it's it's really good. I listened to it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I would say that the I guess it's sort of a concept album, maybe, and it's about a alien or flying saucer man. Uh, who comes to Earth and you know travels Earth and it's definitely some of the better the psych that I've heard. Definitely some of the best private press psych I've heard. It's a yeah, and it says nineteen seventy nine, but it definitely feels earlier. Or like it's it doesn't necessarily feel like nineteen seventy nine. Uh, it's got a lot of like noise. I don't know noise to effects on it, and it's uh it's pretty neat. And so. Uh, the label is pretty cool too. It looks like. Oh, that's really a cool one. So it wasn't on our radar uh, until, of course, you know, when you see a cover, it looks like that. You're like, well, that's cool. You already know it's cool. Um, and then, you know, first thing we did was put it on the turntable. And then we were just like, then I did a little looking into it, and I was just like, man, this is pretty darn cool. Um, so it's always nice. Uh, it is Indiana. I, I don't know a ton of information, uh, um, you know, about the artist. Um, um, maybe, yeah, as we find more information out, we'll... We'll maybe make another post about it. Yeah. And hopefully we'll do a post on Steady Well and Sid or Amulet or some of the other local stuff from the uh, 70s, uh, yeah. early 80s. Uh, yeah. And not just, uh, you know, from Evansville because Santa Claus, Indiana, there were some really cool labels Scoop. there. Yeah. Scoop. We Great had, garage label. Uh, Sans Inc., uh, sort of garage rock. Uh, what was yeah. the other? Um, um, well, they had Jaguar, the oh, Misfits, Jaguar. not the Misfits from New York, but right. the Misfits. Showboat uh, Records. Yeah, Showboat, which, Showboat was a label from Santa Claus, and Scoop was a sub-label of Showboat that had uh, had a lot of really cool garage records. Yeah. So, the Weegians, which I think were from Evanston. Mm. So, uh, we'll show some of that yeah. in a different video. Uh, and we, for we people do like have private press stuff. Some more 45s on Gigantic, um, and we pull those we together. Some, yeah, on Scoop, and maybe we can do just a, a video on regional 45s. It would be kind of cool. Now, this is a cool record. Um, this is not regional, but I just wanted to show it because I thought it was really neat. 
Uh, yeah, the label is House of the Fox, and it is uh, Maceo and all the king's men uh, doing their own thing, which uh, basically uh, Maceo Parker, and if, I think for pronouncing that correctly, Maceo Parker and Melvin Parker were, well, they were brothers, but um, it was mostly, these are members of J James Brown's backup band. And I guess they all must have got tired of James Brown and they all split together. And they started did, getting fine. <laughs> started getting fine by James Brown. And this is some funk. Uh, I feel like funk is kind of a one you don't see a whole lot. It's a, it's a very cool record. Yeah. It's super good. And then after, after I think they did, might have did two albums like this and then went back to James Brown, and then later, uh, Maceo Parker went on to work with George Clinton, the P-Funk, and different, um, George Clinton projects, and, um, but it's really killer, um, funk, and the, uh, label is this black and white, um, but yeah, it's super good, um, it's not in perfect condition, but it still, it's awesome. It's a great to listen to. So, you know, never underestimate a cover, you know. Obviously, I've picked out cool cover albums that have cool covers, and they are not that great. Sometimes they are awesome, and then sometimes you've got a cover that looks sort of like, like, no big deal, and then you listen to it, and you're like, wow. We, they don't need to spend money on We've only had that a uh, few days, like maybe half a week. Mm -hmm. And we've only played it about three times, but it's really good. Like, it's uh, one of those things you throw on and you can, you can listen to it all day. Yeah. So. so those are just some of the cool records that we wanted to show that we've recently acquired. And then um, we've got um, Jerome Can Do His Carcass Collection. Yeah, I'll show you some Carcass Records real quick. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll probably call it, but, um, uh, this is actually, I believe, this is a reissue of, uh, Reek. It came in the black bag. This came out in 2013. Body bag. And it comes with a giant poster, and it is on this green vinyl. It's like, um, no, it's, isn't it called, is it puke or rotting? Yeah. It's some, some kind of, oh wait, is this one supposed to be sent in? No, you're thinking of the, um, County Medical Examiner final. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, this is, a. Uh, and the name of the whole album? Rick of Putrefaction. This is a great record. This actual version of it doesn't sound so great, <laughs> but, um, it's, uh, the mastering on it's really really not that good. It's put out by Earache, but um, I had a copy of the original and it sounded great. I wish I still had it. It comes with a little toe tag and a huge poster. It does come with a huge poster. And I don't know, like, I guess we would only be able to hang this type of poster up in our room uh, because it's pretty crazy. Like, I mean, you know, it's a bunch of body parts and mixed in with all parts, but... <laughs> But I do still have the original cassette, and it sounds great, so. Um, I had a clearer version of this, too, which also, I think, had the same mastering flaw that this had, where it just wasn't very loud or clear. But if you can get the original, it does really sound the best. Um, and this is an original of the second record. This is uh, Symphonies of Sickness, and... Uh, this is on a black vinyl, and same core concept going on there, but uh, it's uh, UK, and it is probably my favorite by them. It's really good. Is this the one that I bid on? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> uh, Jerome's birthday was coming up, and there, you know, I knew that Carcass was one of his bands, and I saw he was watching it on um, a listing on eBay. And I got, I was like, I got a notification that it was getting ready to end. And so I thought, ooh, I'll bid on this for his birthday. 
<clears throat> I mean, he was there, or I told him, I, I'm going to buy this for you. So I put my max bid in, and then I got outbid. And then I, you know, panicked or whatever, and, uh, you know, not really super good under fast pressure of bidding moment like that. And I accidentally bid instead of $65, which uh, I thought he told me that was good or whatever. I bid $65,000, no decimal point. And so I knew, I mean, I knew it wouldn't go up to that high, but I knew but I was matter, winning that record. record no what so it was, if it's a $65 record and it was, I was getting, and people bid up to a hundred, I was getting it for a hundred. So I was super stressed out. Um, so never again. I'm not just, I'm just not going to do that anymore. <laughs> but, but it's a great record. It sounds great. Uh, and this is a UK import. Yeah. I mean, this is a earache. Which, I had early. sold all my early Eric stuff when I opened my first store to get the money to open it. And so I've slowly, ever since, I've been trying to get some of it back. But, uh, March 18. Yeah. December. It's a great record. Um, this is, uh, Choice Cuts. It's a compilation. It, uh, has, um, everything from, uh, from the, uh, I have all the original tapes. I did not get rid of those. But, uh, has everything from, I guess, necrotism and hard work and, uh, swan song you would need. Um, it sounds great. It's a good compilation. So. Yeah, it's a double album. And, uh, so. This is Mosh, uh, 55, or, yeah, 555. Five five three zero. Is that an I or an I? I have no idea. Oh, I I think. But anyway, that's where <laughs> they're at now. When we were showed the ten inch record uh, collection, I showed this one, which was autographed, and um, this is uh, um, from the surgical steel era, and it's the EP. Um, they also have a seven inch uh, captive bolt. Uh, which I have somewhere, but I uh, didn't dig it out. But you didn't cool get out the, any of your stuff. Yeah, I didn't get any of the carcass. Well, that'll be another time. But um, that one is autographed. And what's cool about that is from that era, uh, we actually have each version that they did, and they are all signed by the band. One was uh, gifted to us from uh, Josh. Um, one we had won in a raffle, and, uh, and one we bought in a collection. Yes. Oh. So yeah, these complete are all, edition. It seems one like is the, these uh, are redundant. Yeah, <laughs> they all <laughs> yeah, have whatever. the same tracks on them, but yeah, uh, they are different. This is the picture disc, and it's kind of cool. Oh, so, so we have three autographed pieces then, all surgical steel no, era. It's four. Oh, four. Four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, if you count the uh, 10 inch GP, which, uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And that one, the picture disc comes with a patch, so that's pretty cool. And this comes with a inner of the same artwork, and then that's the inside of the gate on the, the complete edition. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for carcass. Um, well, I can go to close up to until, these tapes. Until so. we get uh, until we get necrotism on vinyl or uh, tools of the trade. Tools of the trade and necrotism. That's symphony, but yeah. No, I was saying those are the oh, ones you need. Yeah. Tools of the trade and necrotism. Necrotism, if you have them, um, and just and you want to sell them. Oh, this is cute because this. The instruments like purpley. So yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for watching our video. It's kind yeah, of random, much, a little uh, carcass, and then some regional folk psych, regional type stuff, funk, RB. That's sort of like our collection, though. I mean, we uh, we have all kinds of yeah. Tomorrow we are going to do another stock video, and it'll have uh, a lot of metal, a lot of indie. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So, uh, just trying to get a little bit, 
more into our personal collection of videos from home. And um, help. we're still going to do a trip hop yes. uh, video and also the uh, video game music soundtrack video and um, Blues Explosion. My favorite band is the Blues Explosion. I, I've got uh, one of those too. So, <laughs> anyway. Thank you for watching. If you want to see stock videos for the store uh, or personal collection videos um, or just whatever, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, comment below uh, because that always makes our day to see people um, comment, you know. So anyway, thank you for watching. All Have right. a great night. <laughs>